Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Upper Room Fellowship of Jesus Christ Friday Bible Study. Pastor Tyrone, our Pastor Nike here will be tonight, and we will continue with Psalm 7, uh, Proverbs 17, Part 2. But before we start, let us pray. Now, Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for this wonderful day and for bringing us all here for your word. And just pray that you anoint this study and bless this study and uh, give us your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding as we study your word tonight. And anoint everyone here in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, previously, talked about Psalms 17, verse 1, and it says, A dry Better is a dry morsel with quietness than a house full of feasting with strife. Amen. Talked about how, you know, who knew not being in a house full of arguments and strife is better to be in a quiet place and uh, to eat and to just be there instead of a house full of arguments, fighting and things like that. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Next verse. Uh, verse 4 says, An evil doer will heed to false lips. Lips. A liar listens eagerly to a spiteful tongue. And uh, we talked about how evil doers spread gossip and uh, lies and and how we are, we we are not to partake it in those kind of things. That um, these are the things that evil doers do. This is the gossip and slander and lies and um, things they say about people. And um, and this is um, not of the Lord for sure. Amen. And verse 6 says, Children's children are a crown of old men, and the glory of children is their father. Praise the Lord. Children, children. We talk about our grandchildren and our children, you know, how they bring us joy, and and um, we train them the way they should go, and they would not depart from it. And what a blessing children truly are to all of us. Amen. Okay, any comments? Okay, let us move forward. Okay, let us start in Psalms, uh, Proverbs 17, verse 9. It says, He who covers a transgression seeks love, but he who repeat, repeats a matter separates friends. Amen. Any comments? The word tells us about, you know, being slow to speak and slow to rap and and um, to always be walking in love. And, um, but we know how the other verses beginning talks about how, how either evil ones will start things and, um, and those things spread. And we've seen times where a person will say something about a person and and it separates friends. It causes arguments and, and strife and, you know, and this, the wicked, the wicked that uh, it's in their hearts to do these things. But we know that um, God loves us and God doesn't want us to be like this. So we are to seek his, to seek his love, to always show love. Uh, to not get involved in these kind of situations. And um, and he gives us peace. Amen. 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 And, and for those who would cover a transgression, that is a display of compassion for the one who is, who is transgressing. Amen. And, and that is... That is uh, a lead into love to have that compassion, and that that is that that is love. That is in in it is a form of love to have that to think that of another to have a compassion, especially when you've been 
long, possibly, you you know, you have to dig deeper, deep to show that compassion to someone who's wronged you, who's transgressed upon you. And so, yeah, and, and so when you love, that's like in, to God, that's seeking love. Uh, when, when you love another, because that's what God desires of us. He, he desires for us to love him and to love others. And love others, yeah, love him and love others. But if we begin by loving others, then we're on the way, then he knows that that same love is love for him because the love comes from him. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Rufus. Any other comments? Hi, this is Steve. Yeah, th this verse alone could probably spend hours on this verse. This is so, so significant. When we are wrong, as Pastor Rufus was just saying, uh, it is our fleshly nature to immediately uh, say, you know what so-and-so did to me, trying to gain compassion for ourselves, to make the other person look bad, to get more people to agree that they're wrong. All that stuff is in our flesh. That is the, the way to, to, to make expose other people, which makes us look better. It has people make people feel better for sorry for us. It is so beyond our flesh to look at it the other way when someone wrongs us and then we don't tell anybody about it and we just pray for them and forgive them and only God can do that in us. Um and then you get to the second part, which is what you were saying, Pastor Tyrone. Uh, instead, we we spread it, and then all of a sudden there's division and strife and judging and all that stuff. It's it's a mess, and that's the way the world and our flesh operate, but not God's way. And by His grace, He can cause us to do these to to not do these things. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. Absolutely. We have a tendency. We want to know what somebody else did wrong and all that kind of stuff. It's a, it's a, it's a fleshly thing. It's a, it's about you know lifting ourselves up, wanting to see others down. All that. It's just terrible, but it's, uh, it's the, the human condition. But praise the Lord for Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes. Yeah. We and we want to point out that they did something wrong. That's the thing too. You know, you're right about that, Pastor Steve. Yes, and that, that statement, we want to lift ourselves up, Pastor Steve, that's an indication of, of, of uh, that behavior. Lift, by lifting ourselves up, we, we want to uh, we do that to put the other person down, which is just the opposite of what God desires in us. He wants us to lift up that other person. He wants us to cover that transgression, and that's what lifts the other person up. But well, when we repeat it, we 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 attempted to put our raise ourselves up by putting the other person down. Amen. You know, and you know, we show them that we are different when we don't do those things. When God puts it in our hearts not to to uh, cover uncover a person's transgression, their sins, their mistakes, or whatever they've done, that we you know. We will gain a friend as opposed to separating a friend. That's for sure. Amen. Amen. All right, any other comments? In Proverbs 16, verse 28, the first man sows strife. And a whisperer separates the best of friends. Amen. Amen. Yeah, all the things we just talked about, this is what it does. Any other comments? Okay, there's one more verse. In Psalm 32, verse 1, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Amen. Amen. 
Thank you for including this verse. This is very important. We are to be in the image of God, and God is the one who covers transgression, not just blotting out our sins, but he doesn't expose our sins to the people around us. He doesn't, uh, unless, of course, we're not repentant, right? Then then he'll ultimately do what he has to do. But if we're repentant and we're confessing, he doesn't go and tell everybody else what we're doing, even though he sees everything. He does not do that. And that's his nature, and that's what he wants in us. Praise the Lord. Amen. You're right. That's his na nature, Pastor Steve, because that's what God does for us. That's what Christ did for us when we went to the cross. He covered our transgression. Oh, he forgave, forgave. He forgave yeah. our transgression. And true forgiveness is not repeating the matter after you've been forgiven, right? Right. Someone if, After you've forgiven someone. And then you repeat it again. That's not a real forgiveness. That's not a, a covering of sin. Right. And God would have every right to expose us if he wanted to, but he doesn't do it. Amen. Amen. Any other comments? Okay, verse 10. Rebuke is more effective for a wise man than a hundred blows of a fool. Amen. Any comments? Well, wisdom, we talk about a wise man. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If you fear the Lord and you know God is rebuking you, you pay attention to it and you learn from it. But a fool doesn't recognize that God is the one getting their attention and they just keep doing what they do and they're not, they don't have the fear of the Lord. Amen. And do not do most of the time, though, they don't even want to be rebuked. They just want to keep doing what they're doing and thinking it's okay. So a lot of times, you know, we talk, listen to some of the Proverbs and it says, you know, a fool is not going to listen to you anyway, even if you rebuke him and, and share, you know, or try and correct him. He doesn't want to hear it. Amen. Yeah. Right. He doesn't want to hear it so that that uh, rebuke has the opposite effect rather than uh, reflecting, uh, <clears throat> being effective in a positive way. It works negatively uh, to a fool because he, despise, he despises the rebuke in, in addition to his transgression that he's already done. And so he falls deeper into the pit. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Any other comments? In Proverbs 9, verses 8 to 9, Do not correct a scoffer, lest he hate you. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love you. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be still wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. Amen. 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 You know, a wise man always wants to be corrected, he wants to be rebuked. It makes him wiser. And uh, it teaches them, and we learn from it. You know, it's, being rebuked is not just something to just point out the mistakes we're doing or, or you know, as a bad thing. You no, know, it's, it's to help us. It's to help us to learn and increase in learning and to give us instructions. And we should be happy about that instead of, you know, instead of like the fool who, you know, despises it and hates it and hates you for, for doing it. Amen. And those instructions to a wise man is just more, more tools that he would come become even wiser. He Amen. would increase to learn because now he has 
more positive tools to learn with. And that is, and that, and therefore he's prone to be wiser, increase yeah. his learning. Praise the Lord. He or she, that is. Yes. <laughs> God chastens or corrects those whom he loves. In Hebrews, it says, do not despise the chastening of the Lord. It may not feel good at the moment, but it's for us to learn and grow. Absolutely. Being chastened is not a fun thing. That's for sure. You're right, Pastor Knight. It's not at the time, but when we look at it, in God's point of view, it's a necessary thing because we do want to we want to do what God's will is, and if we do it wrong, we want Him to correct us. We we want that rebuke, and it does make us wise. It gives us learning, and it makes us wiser, and it increases our learning. It does all of those things, you know? And with that, we actually teach others about with it, you know. So it all has its purpose. No. Amen. Amen. Any other comments? Okay, verse 11. It says, an evil man seeks only rebellion. Therefore, a cruel messenger will be sent against him. Praise the Lord. Many comments. He gets what he seeks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think about this verse and, you know, I do think about I think it's in the supporting verse. It's about David and Absalom and how Absalom was rebelling against his father. And he was doing all kinds of evil against him. And, um, and he was asking for the counselors to give him, uh, uh, give him messages to, uh, to what to do when he goes against his father, you know, and, of course, Ahithophel, the wisest person, and, and one of the captains gave his opinion. And uh, and um, and that message was was uh, used against Absalom. And we'll see it in the next, in the supporting verse. Um, but we know that those that seek evil against the God's people, he uses them to... Um, against those that, that persecute his people. You know, we've seen that, you know, Haman was trying to rebel against God's children and destroy them, but, you know, it got turned against him. And it didn't happen. And he was using the king to do that. But everything worked for good for those who love God. And, and um, everything backfired on all of those guys that, you know, you don't mess with the children of God. Amen. 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 Get getting your hair caught in a, a branch. Yeah. <laughs> that's a that's a tough way to to lose it, right? Yeah, that's a, <laughs> to lose it's the battle. All the ways to go. That ain't that kind of the tough way to go? Huh? Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's, <laughs> yeah. Any other comments? In Second Samuel 15, verse 31, then someone told David, saying, Ahithophel is among the conspirators with Absalom. And David said, O Lord, I pray, turn the counsel of Ahithophel into foolishness. Let a man 
Oh, that's not that's right. the next verse. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah. We know that the Lord was with David, and all he had to do was pray that prayer, and it was done. You know, we know it in the story that, you know, in Absalom's eyes, Ahithophel's words and counsel became foolishness to him, and he did not follow it, even though it was the right one, it was the right thing to do. And, and uh, but God answered David's prayer and turned it into foolishness. And, uh, and, you know, as, as we were saying about the Rubens, uh, in, in the film, I mean, uh, Absalom ended up hanging from a tree from his hair, you know, and that was it. That's right. And and notice that David didn't, didn't ask the Lord for any direct counsel against him, Absalom himself, but he counseled against Ahithophel. Yes. That his 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 counsel would do the work and he would be directly responsible for that that feat that you know unfaithful feat that his son came to which took his life amen but even a hit the fell got convicted you know because we know that he you know when the when Absalom didn't take his advice he realized that you know, he had done a foolish thing in the eyes of the Lord. And we know that he went home and set his house in order. And, you know, he knew that that he had messed up. That he should have never went against God's anointed. And, um, and his demise was after that. So praise the Lord. We can see this is a good example that... Um, you know, it's not a good thing to go against God's anointing. David didn't even have to take any action. All he did was he prayed. That was it. That's all it took. And it happened. Amen. May we all remember this verse when someone is coming against us or we're worried about what someone's doing or anything like that. God answered his prayer. He'll answer ours as well. He blesses all those who put their trust in him. Amen. 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 A man after God's own heart. Absolutely. Any other comments? And he receives of it as well, of God's heart. I Amen. Mean, okay. Now, verse 12. Let a man meet a bear robbed of her cubs rather than a fool in his folly. <laughs> 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 hey man, anybody got anything on this? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> That's pretty extreme. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Who do you pick on that one? <laughs> hey, That's pretty tough. I guess getting entangled with Foolishness and wickedness is way worse than getting yeah. running into a bear. Yeah. If you have a tiger with a mama bear, you ain't going to be, you know. Yeah. Mama bears don't mess around. When she's protecting her cubs, uh, it's, it's not a pretty sight if you come near. Well, that's true, but... At least you know what to expect when you see that situation. You know the bears <laughs> coming at you, but a fool in this folly, boy, that's that's who who knows. <laughs> yeah.
Well, I think we can we can discern whether a fool uh, is speaking foolishness or not, or just by what the words he's saying and what he's mm -hmm. doing. You know, sometimes yeah. we can see it coming, and 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 you know, definitely when he's talking, he definitely reveals himself that he's foolish. Uh huh. But what is he gonna lead to, though? Oh yeah, that's true. When he gets deep into that foolishness, that folly, he gets he, where, where? Where's he gonna go? Where's he gonna take him? Well, he gets more and more dangerous. If if a person, if a fool follows after his folly, it, he he will become more and more dangerous. Maybe to others and to himself. Amen. Any other comments on this? It's a tough verse. <laughs> In Second Samuel 17, verse 8, For her said, Hushai, you know your father and his men, that they are mighty men, and they are enraged in their minds. Like a bear robbed of her cubs in the field, and your father is a man of war and will not camp with the people. Mm. I think that's it. Amen. Can you go back to the first part of that? They're enraged in their minds. Ah. Yes. Like Can does anybody have some background into this? Like um his men, they were mighty men, but and right, what was the situation going on then? We don't know. I don't know. I don't have any. So this oh, is Ahithophel and Absalom. It's after the uh, Ahithophel situation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I kind of got here late. So That's okay. So Hushai is talking about David, the father. He's telling Absalom, your father, right? Right. Or he's a, he's giving his advice on what Absalom should do, just like her fifth had did. Yeah. He was pointing out that David was a mighty man of war. And that it would not be a, it would not be good for him to follow Ahithophel's advice. I see him seven or seven. Yeah, says a hit the fair advice was not good at that time. So yeah. Anybody have any other comments on this? It's a tough verse. Okay, verse 13. Whoever rewards evil for good, evil will not depart from his house. Amen. Whoever rewards evil for good. Comments. A verse to remember when you're being persecuted. That the person who's persecuting you for serving the Lord or doing the right thing. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. And so... You know that it's they're they're gonna have it rough if they're messing with God's anointed. Yes. 
You know what I mean? We shouldn't come in agreement with an evil thing or evil evil that a person is doing or, or anything they said that's not right. Um, we definitely shouldn't come in agreement with those things. We should, you know, stand on the, the word of God and uh, not be afraid. Amen. In the color comments. Okay. In First Kings twenty one, verse twenty two. I will make your house like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and like the house of Bisha, the son of Ahijah. Because of the provocation which, with which you have provoked me to anger and made Israel sin. Amen. Amen. Comments. We know what kings, you know, kings weren't had great responsibility. And so goes the king, so goes the people. If the king was good, then we know that the people were blessed. And if the king was not good, then a lot of times the sins and the things that the evil kid did came upon the people as well. But we, um, for those who weren't following the Lord, but um, we know that Jeroboam was not a good king. And he did a lot of evil in the sight of the Lord. And he angered the Lord. And, um, and I'm sure evil was in his house all the time because he um, led the people astray. And uh, he did not good, do what was good in the sight of God. And so... Um, People, you know, suffered for that. And, um, but the Lord brought them out because the Lord is good. And, uh, and they, um, they were blessed eventually. But we see and read in the Bible all the time about how kings and people um, do a lot of bad things. And, um, they bring the evil upon them and upon the people. Amen. Any comments? In the Proverbs, it says, whoever rewards evil for good, evil will not depart from his house. Um, it's like in Romans 12, 17, repay no one evil for evil, but whoever rewards evil for good. It's like the verse that says, um, the things that are good, people call evil, evil or evil, bad. right? Yeah. The things that are bad, people call yeah. good. And there it's, we go. it's now switched. The, the things in this world is turning the opposite. Mm -hmm. What's good is called evil and what's evil is called good. You know, we we see that and hear that all the time now. Verse 14, it says, The beginning of strife is like releasing water. Therefore, stop contention before a quarrel starts. Wow. That whole visual, the beginning of strife, like releasing water, like a flood, the floodgates open. And yes. um, that's some very wise advice. <laughs> Stop contention before a quarrel starts. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Very God, wise. Oh, God does not just... want us to, to start strife. He does not want that from his people. Hmm. Well, the longer that water flows, the 
the more damage it's going to do. And so, so it, it be, when you begin, you can just think of it as that's strife being released. Stop it before it does something, before it gets to the point to where it's bad, because that's where it's headed. Yes, yes. You know, it's like the verse that Jesus said, be angry, but sin not or be angry, but don't sin, basically. It's right. like there you can have this anger, but it's what do you do with it? And it's the same thing when you have a disagreement with some somebody. Uh, the best thing to, to do is to agree to disagree so that it doesn't turn into this storm um where it, it it gets out of control um you know like releasing of the the waters um yeah i yeah, always but... thought that that verse about be angry but don't do not sin or sin not was an interesting verse where you know he he was kind of saying, you know, own your feelings, own your anger, but but be wise in how you express it. And yeah. and there is a way to express anger without um that 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 uncontrollable um venom, you know? Yes. Uh and and this you know he's saying to be wise enough to stop the contention before the, the, the quarreling starts. And that's really, you know, that can be a hard thing to do. You know, if, if, if you let it get out ahead of you, it, it takes on a life of its own, almost right. anger. That's, that's right. And that's why the next Pep part of that passage says, "Don't let the sun go down on your anger. right." And because if you let the sun go down, then then you're in trouble. Yeah, because you it stayed with you too long, and now it's out of control. So you you stop it before that it gets out of control, and that's when the you know bad things happen Amen. after sundown. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So this really comes down to like not letting the flesh take over because we know this is all flesh. You mm -hmm. know, it's our flesh that rises up. It's our flesh that thinks it has to defend ourselves and, and fights back. And and uh, it's the flesh that just, you know, and, and you're right, Sister Joanna, sometimes it just happens because that's, that's how it happens. It just... You know, next thing you know, you're arguing with one person and then, you know, they're saying something that makes your flesh even rise even more. And then you start saying something and then you're going back and forth and yeah. it's out of control. Like Pastor Ruben says, that before you know it, it's like everybody's mad and angry and ready to close, you know, and, and um, it's all caused by the flesh. And the devil loves it. Huh? And the devil loves it. Yes, he does. He's Come loving it. He's laughing. He's so. Good. Yeah. He's having a good time with it. Um, okay, I think there might be something going on over there at the battle household, but. Oh. So, um, so we um, you know, we want to stop that before it, it definitely gets to that point. We want to yeah, it's been for a few weeks, so yeah, you're coming. Use That's God's you wisdom. Each other. Thank you, each other for me, Jen. You look so nice. Thank you. I just came from a church thing. So. Thank you. <laughs> yes, and so we do. We want to. We want to be slow to speak and, and quick to listen and slow to rap because you know that's how we stop the contention before the quarrel starts. Amen. Amen. 
What do we as God's children and his church have that the world doesn't have at their disposal when things do arise? Prayer. Prayer. Praise the Lord. Well answered. Amen. That's the answer to this whole thing. The answer is recognize it. And even the world says, you know, take a pause. But if 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 we don't get God to to lift this offense and anger, it's just going to fester anyway. So get prayer. Get prayer. Be addicted to love. God will lift all that anger and and extinguish the fire and we can return to normalcy very quickly if we do that amen amen any other comments In 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 9 to 12. But concerning brotherly love, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. And indeed, you do so toward all the brethren who are in all Macedonia. But we urge you, brethren, that you increase more and more that you also aspire to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business, and to work with your own hands as we have we commanded you. That you may walk properly toward those who are outside, and that you may lack nothing. Amen. 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 Any other comments? Well, I like the part here to mind your own business. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'm being a, a busy. We were muted. I didn't realize we were muted. Oh, no. But you know, love God and love people, and and He, that's what the Lord requires of us, and um, and His love can flow through us so that we're just so overflowing that it is going to spread to other people. Um, it, it will spill over and, and he will give us the fruit of his spirit. I, I had a couple conversations with people today about the fruit of the spirit. And um, it, it, it's so interesting how God reminds me of that almost on an hourly basis <laughs> at my job. Amen. Yes. Question that. Okay. Any other comments? Well, yes. Uh, speaking of the food of the spirit, note, notice also that it begins with the magic word love. And it says, and it doesn't say the fruits of the spirit. It says the fruit of the spirit is love. And then it goes on to say joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness. And, and but of course we know Love is, they all flow from love. All these other fruits are, uh, are these other conditions, they flow from love. Love. It says love. The fruit of the Spirit is love. And in addition to that, God in His Spirit, He blesses us. <coughs> Excuse me with the joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, 
and gentleness and self-control. And but love and, and love has been is tantamount to this whole message today. We've seen love in most of the verses. It's 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 love. It's love that that God says God's our hearts. And is is love that God's all those fruits. It it all begins with love. Our lives to God unto God begins with love. And it flows with love. Amen. 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 Any other comments? Verse 15, he who justifies the wicked and he who condemns the just, both are alike an abomination to the Lord. Amen. Any comments? Hmm. There's that word abomination. <laughs> yeah, justifying the wicked, condemning the just. There's mm -hmm. so much of that that's going on in our world today. Um, yes, it is. Rationalizing. Um, it's, that's a strong word, abomination. You know, it's it's like it's like two people who are going the wrong way on the freeway. You know, opposing each other. Uh, you know, justifying the, the wicked and, and condemning the just. You know, you're going the wrong way. <laughs> you don't you don't justify the wicked and you don't condemn the just. You. Right. It's just you do you go the opposite way. Uh, you you justify the just and you condemn the wicked. Um, because both of them we know in the way that is expressed above, they are abominations to the Lord. We don't want that. We we want the love of the Lord. We just got done talking about the love of the Lord and you know, the love, joy, hope, patience, goodness, and kindness. And now, you know, we, we, we're going away from that. We've gone way away from that. And so, and then that's what this, this verse is telling us here. Uh, no way. You don't do this. Well, we know that's the Lord does not like it. The Lord definitely doesn't like it. He doesn't like it. And it doesn't feel good for, for us. We don't like We shouldn't like it. We better not like it. <laughs> not not even want to draw closer to God. You can't, you, you, you don't, you can't like that. You gotta, you, you despise it. Amen. Amen. Any other comments? Hmm. Here's the next one. One moment. Okay, so it's Exodus twenty three, verse seven. Keep yourself far from the false matter. Do not kill the innocent and righteous, for I will not justify the wicked. Amen. 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 God's going to deal with them. Hmm. Those who mess with his people, those who do wicked upon him, and um,
Those that do evil in the sight of the Lord. He always has. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Amen. Yeah, that behavior there expressed above is justifying the wicked. And we, we no way we want to do that. We don't want to, we don't want to be in a, we don't even think about that. Um, killing the innocent and, and, and the righteous. Yeah. And the righteous, right. And the first part of it is interesting. Uh, he's saying just keep away from a false matter. So if we go into a situation knowing that there's something false going on, it's wrong. I mean, he he wants to protect us from getting involved in those types of things. That's right. Amen. Yeah. And your best chance is to stay far away from far it. Far away from it, it says. Keep yourself yes. far away. Yeah, put some distance between it and you. And and that's your best chance. Amen. Run, Forrest, run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's time to run, Forrest. Run away from that. <laughs> Any other comments? Yes, keep yourself far from a false matter, Forrest. <laughs> Verse 16, why is there in the hand of a fool the purchase price of wisdom, since he has no heart for it? Amen. Hmm. Comments. That's, uh, that's a tough one. And that's like the parable of the talents when... God, or when the master went away and came back, the one who had five talents mm -hmm. made five more, and then the two, two more. But the one that just only had one mm -hmm. hid it under the ground. He was afraid to use it. Yes. And it's like the same thing. It's like, why not use the wisdom that God has given you? Oh, that's very good. Excellent. Is it because of fear? You know, there's yes. perfect love cast out fear. Amen. You know, fear of man cannot be greater than the fear of the Lord. Amen. That's right. He had no heart to do anything with it. He just put it in the ground and left it. <laughs> and then the master told him, you should have put it in the bank at least. You know, <laughs> got interest, you know? But he just was so, you know, he definitely was not seeking wisdom, that's for sure. Because he could have just did that. But it did not work out well for him because he took his talent and, you know, he threw him into the outer darkness and, and it was well in the gnashing of teeth. So, you know, we know that <laughs> These things will be got fools than those that do not have wisdom. Yeah, the, no the, heart the, for God. If we look at the question now, why is there in the hand of a fool the purchase price of wisdom? Why why is he even there to well, the answer is to 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 show us, to teach us a lesson that, that is that is that is not the correct behavior. Um, of a wise person. Well, right. also is that um, the hand of a fool, a fool has no discernment of what wisdom even is. And, and then it says <clears throat> there, yeah. he has no heart for it. Okay. So why would he try to, per to come up with a purchase price for wisdom when he couldn't tell it if it was <laughs> wisdom, if it was right in front of his face? That's why he's a fool. Amen. 
Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. In the New Testament, it says, if any one of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who will give to all liberally. That's but if we ask God for wisdom and not use it, what's the use? That's right. Amen. <laughs> what's the point of asking for wisdom if you're not going to apply? <laughs> Very good point. What's the use of asking for it and getting it and not using it? <laughs> kind of like, oh, no, go ahead. Like, like Solomon, he asked for wisdom, but yet he had his heart was away from God. Yeah. God gave him wisdom, and God was pleased that he asked for wisdom yeah. rather than riches or long life. That's right. Um, but because his heart went after other things. He became a fool. Yes, he did. Yeah, he did. It's a perfect example. So, so God, God knew that wisdom would benefit him uh, a lot, and and He yes. gave him wisdom, and He not only benefited Solomon, but He benefited us because Solomon wrote all those wisdom uh, passages and books, and and so He enlightened <clears throat> all of us. Amen. Well, you know, God even did. when he left God, God didn't take his wisdom away. He still had that. Right. I think in one one verse in Ecclesiastes, or he said it talks about that. He talks about, you know, even though I feel this emptiness and I don't have God, and I'm paraphrasing, you know, I still have my wisdom to do all these things, you know, and and he was suffering, you know. He spoke from experience in, sure in the book of Ecclesiastes. Yes. The last, one of the last verses was, this is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God for this is man's own. That's right. Amen. That's right. Uh, Ecclesiastes 12, 13. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, he didn't wait till he, he uh, got there. Well, he, he spoke in Proverbs 17, 16. He spoke some, made a wise statement there. Why is there in the hand of a fool the purchase price of wisdom? <laughs> Since he has no heart for it. Amen? Amen. We don't know when he wrote that, though. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, he had a lot of wives and concubines. Yes, and he did. All, the, all the wives turned his heart away from God. So. <laughs> Yes. He, and he was given wisdom, and yet his heart, unlike D his father David, David was a man after God's own heart. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Kind of made them different. He did not follow after the gods. You know, mm -hmm. we know David didn't do those kind of things. David had issues, and he had his trials and things, but he did not do that stuff. Yes. He did not follow up. He had concubines and wives too, but he never left God. He never let them separate his relationship with God. I think even though David did all those things as well, but his heart was after God. That's like right. He, he repented. I mean, he had this repentant heart. Amen. You know, he did definitely not want to do bad in the sight of the Lord. And when he did, he confessed it. He got prayer. And um, he wrote a lot of songs about it. So we know all the stuff he went through, too. and How the Lord delivered him and blessed him. And gave him peace. Amen. Amen. Any other comments? And, and in the end... The Lord chose Solomon to build his temple. Yes. And because of what he had, what he gave him and what he made good use of. And so Solomon, he, 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 uh, he took advantage of his role. He took advantage of what God gave him the most was his, his wisdom, even though he, you know, had all his wise and, and, and he went, you know, astray in, in with that part of his life. He used what God gave him 
to his best, to the best, I believe, the best he could. And and so he blessed Solomon. Solomon was blessed in that. And we also was blessed in that because we're having this study tonight. And we're being blessed in that. Amen. 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 Okay, we'll do the supporting verse and we'll call it a night. Oh, I don't know why I'm not here. I have an idea. But it's there. Right oh, here. Right there. Show right reference. Here. We'll just do this instead. In Proverbs 23, 23. Buy the truth and do not sell it. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. Amen. Amen. Buy the truth. Buy the truth. And do not sell it. Right. And do not yes. sell it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Any comments? Okay. Well, we will finish up Psalms of Proverbs 17 next week. If there's no other comments. Let us pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful time in your word. We just thank you for just a blessing, anointing us as we just studied the word today and um, we just uh, give you all the honor and all the praise and all the glory, Lord, that you uh, you are in the midst of us. You guide us. You help us. So I just pray you give everyone a wonderful night's sleep tonight. Give everyone the rest that they need that we can wake up tomorrow and just be blessed by the Sabbath day. We lift up the Sabbath message for tomorrow and um, just be with us all. Uh, we love you, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Oh, Amen. one thing, Pastor. Uh-huh.